Hi, Wagema Karanja from Nairobi, Kenya. This is Spotlight. Okay, I'm married, uh, one wife, three children, a uh, daughter, and two boys. Um, going to school currently and uh, graduating from primary to secondary for the first two, and the last one's in grade two. Ogema loves life, uh, enjoys life. Uh, lives for today. Uh, not exactly what my wife would want to hear, but we enjoy life every day as it comes. We just realize life is too short to wait for things to happen. Um, I'm a marketer by profession. I uh, work for the largest uh, media house in East Africa. I've been there for the last 17 and 10 months. And uh, media has been an interesting space, so I've grown and enjoyed my space in it and building my own little corner that has been quite an interesting experience. Um, come from a family of three children, uh, with an elder brother, younger sister, and we're quite close-knit. Um, we've enjoyed life together. We share a lot of experiences. Uh, we share the laughs and the laughter and the cries together. And we just live life as it comes. I uh, got into media in 2004. Um, I was looking for a job uh, just after relocating and I came across um, an opening in one of the media houses and I applied. They unfortunately didn't have a position then uh, that uh, would fit with me. So they referred me to another media house and that's how I got into new media. Um, Initially was a challenge because I was, I'd come from a different environment and we started picking up uh, and learning as we went along. Um, it was a changing time, so the media industry was actually a little in its democratic infancy. So it was picking up and learning as we go along and creating new ideas for the people that we were talking to. Uh, basically, that means I manage uh, uh, a number of radio stations um, in terms of their sales and commercial potential. And that entails managing a team uh, who, uh, who go out and source for business for the business, for the company. The team then has to create, produce and express the client's needs on air to the, our audience who our commercial and radio production teams have actually created a very vast audience uh, covering close to 80% of the country. So then we're able to fit in what our client needs into what our audience are looking at and find a mix that works in both ways. Uh, so it's a win-win situation for both. Uh, we educate and info, give a lot of information and our audiences uh, benefit from the products that we actually advertise to them. Uh, the broadcasting industry has had a lot of changes in the last couple of years. Uh, it's grown from an analog to digital setting. Uh, one of the biggest changes I think was that um, moving to the digital space. Uh, it's democratized the space, means more people are actually able to play in that space. Initially it was very expensive to set up. So very few people were able to set up radio stations in comparison to the government uh, stations as well but or TV for that matter. And the digital space wasn't growing yet. Uh, when we moved into the digital space, it became a lot easier for younger, um, less expensive uh, establishments to actually reach the same audience. And that has actually been the, probably the biggest game changer in the industry in the last couple of years. Uh, the, now, the new age that we're actually moving to from the digital is now into a space where information and commercialization is actually going to go into the digital space. So we're going to have a lot more people 
expanding into that. It's initially a, a small niche because of also access to digital services has also been a challenge countrywide. But as those numbers start changing and the space gets easier to get into, you're going to find a lot of commercial conversation trending in that direction. Um, digital has then created opportunities for companies to actually be able to extract a lot of data that would then help them manage, execute, and build campaigns that actually target the specific person rather than just being a mass communication channel. It has also made it easier for independent people to actually produce um, shows, TV shows, radio shows, digital content. It has then created an opportunity for just about anybody to become an, a content creator, digital manager, uh, for people to actually own their own content. We are moving away from generated content by a media establishment to user-generated content, which is then becoming a little more interesting. Uh, you're finding a lot more digital content people on the market who are actually creating content that relates better with the audience. Ideally, flexibility would probably be the biggest asset in terms of ability to adjust to what's happening on the ground. Um, I'll give an example. 15 plus years ago, there were probably five or six TV stations, about 30 to 40 radio stations existing. Now we are close to 200 plus radio stations. So how do you then find a niche space for yourself in that space? Um, how do you then find and agree who is your actual target and who is actually what you what communication do you actually want to achieve? You will find radio stations that are targeting 40 plus people. You'll find radio stations or TV stations in that you know, for that matter who are talking to children only. So how do you find yourself being able to fit in that space that appeals to you best and be flexible enough to appeal to an audience? Because I don't think many people get into media for charity. It's usually a commercial element somewhere at the back of it or an information conversation that you're trying to get. So apart from the news, which now almost anybody can produce news, you'll find a lot of um, what we're calling Mwananchi reporting. So you'll find anybody with a camera, a phone, a good phone will actually be able to record a story happening live as it is, probably transmit it on the net or to a media house for further transmission, fitting into that space. So you're going to compete. Initially, you are competing with five people. Now, 42 million people are able to actually send the same communication out. It just depends how you want to frame your conversation, but the flexibility to adjust to that market. Uh, we're going to find digital phones adjusting to plus three million very shortly. and that will access, give more people access. The more people have access means the more people who are able to produce the content. Then that means if you do not find where you fit in that space, you'll be in a big crowd, in a big pool. And the more fish that get into the pool, the less chance of you being able to get what you want. Can I be selfish and say myself? Um, however, um, my family is probably the biggest people that give me a push. Um, it's nice when someone tells you well done, encourages you, gives you a reason to live. But at the end of the day, sometimes you have to wake up and be realistic that if you don't push yourself individually uh, to achieve certain things, then no matter how much everybody else praises you or gives you a hand up, uh, it doesn't really translate. The flip side is occasionally you do need somebody to hold your hand and necessarily um, we like saying we need mentors, but sometimes you just need somebody who will hold your hand, especially when things are down and somebody who will then guide you a little into uh, making yourself a better person. Um, we have mentors and we have a lot of mentees, but I think good mentorship makes a very big difference and who you choose as the person who's mentoring you is probably going to be a big effect on the overall development of yourself as a person. Okay, I've met one. 
I work for one, so by default, um, he has been very, very different from the rest. He's given different directions. I think uh, Dr. Masharia, uh, apart from just being the pre chief principal at the office, has opened up a lot of different options for a lot of people, gone into a lot of vernacular radio, which means the expansion and reach has actually changed. It's given me an opportunity to transverse this country in all sorts of places, places I would probably never have been. And then you understand that outside your little bubble, that people do a lot of other different things. And it's then been able to understand their lifestyles that helps. Uh, somebody I would have loved to meet, probably Richard Branson. Ideally, because he's just broken barriers where people ne not necessarily thought they would do. Um, it's proven sometimes good schools are not necessarily translate to success, but the ability to, to adjust. Uh, another media mogul I would have loved to meet, much as he's uh, notorious, is Robert Murdoch. Just the fact that he goes against the grain makes him somebody you'd aspire to work with. Um, he has created a lot of controversy, which I think just adds weight to the saying there's nothing like bad news. And he has actually proven that you can actually work in different environments, believe in yourself and support what you want. I wanted to be a pilot. That ended after a couple of classes at Wilson when a decision was made that I needed to have a degree. Biggest mistake ever in life. I think I should have pursued that. Um, the reason is sometimes we, we change our direction based on experiences of other people, not necessarily what you think is the best possible experience. their meaning it's just it's hard to because of the tr the element of why something makes you proud um, is different um, being able to see my children grow uh, being able to see them grow in a stable environment the ability to blend work life balance it's probably not as great as it should have been I wish if I had more money, I'd probably have balanced it a lot better. But the ability to work within what I have and who I am with, I think has been the biggest um, achievement. The money will always follow the hard work. I, I personally believe the money will follow the hard work. So the experiences of watching the things money can't buy, uh, love life and the ability to share things with people, for me, that's probably the biggest achievement. The diversity, the, I've been fortunate to travel and I've experienced different cultures, both here and outside. And the fact that you can appreciate the little things that make different people tick, uh, the ability to see why life on the south end of the border is different from life on the north end of the border. And the ability to blend in and sit with, those, with people in their space is probably the biggest thing. Um, Kenya gives you a chance to meet all sorts of people. And I think by virtue of where I work, I have been able to meet from the top of the country to the bottom end. And that has been, an, I think, a wonderful experience. And this country is offered a lot. I wish people actually understood and took advantage of the opportunities that are there. And it's not always the big things in the big towns. I think people need to spend more time out of, out of town. Then you'll appreciate um, water in Masabit, on the road to Masabit, for instance. You'll appreciate its value is probably more than money. You'll appreciate uh, where a farmer in Nyeri spends X number of hours in a tea plantation a lot more if you visit them rather than what we read about them why someone moving cattle from northeastern through the cattle highway appreciates life in a different way. And those are the things that Kenya offers. I think it's not the tourist locations that we very much like to talk about. It's the other things beyond what the cameras actually show us. Uh, 
now Libya. I think Libya has a mix of culture, a mix of opportunity. And I think Libya is going, probably going to grow to one of the biggest African powerhouses again. Um, they have turned little resources into a lot. I think they had a different type of socialism that then shared resources across to everyone and it gave everybody an opportunity. And that then pushed a lot of things. I think the world has feared strong people who are selfless. And I think those are some of the things that I appreciate about Libya. Um, the ability for a country to offer services to all its citizens at the same rate, I think for me, that's a big deal. Okay, I cook, I clean. <laughs> it's about everything. Um, I love cooking and I love cooking all sorts of foods. Um, anything that has a fire to it is, is good for me. And I enjoy sharing that with people. Yeah. The ability to push the people you're leading to success. And success not necessarily at work, it's also success in their personal lives. I think one of the people who actually mentored me in my early managerial positions, he his key concerns were never how much work we did in the office, it's what you did outside the office. So you could be a very good person in the office, but are you good outside the office? And that ability to change and influence somebody's life positively, I think what makes a good leader good. I would climb mountains as a hobby and probably as a profession. Um, I would race cars a little more. Um, I used to until about 2014. I don't think my wife will let me into a rally car right now, onto a motorcycle for that reason. But um, I love speed and I have actually raced for quite a while and I would love to get back to that. Yeah. Listen to somebody who's telling you how to make yourself better, not how to make yourself richer. Uh, because all the money you'll make in the world, you'll leave it here. But it's how many lives you touch as you go along. Um, I'll not tell people to make sure you get to uni and get a degree because the reality is that it's not becoming the most important thing. But being a good person is actually a lot better. The ability to listen, adjust, and follow advice. I know we keep saying the, the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. I think that's probably the biggest fallacy. Uh, the leaders of tomorrow are still the same people today. But the reason that as a youthful person, you need to listen and try and understand what makes you a better person will make you experience life in a different way and put money aside, but rather the experiences that you build. I think the experiences in life are better than anything else. I think about 30 or so odd years ago, my dad actually sat me down and asked me, uh, why are you flying out? And I had all these big reasons about school. And he told me it's just for the experiences. Once you build good experiences, then life follows. Yeah. Live life and enjoy it.